So um, I just want to say thank you for all coming out today. I appreciate everyone spreading the good word, the inspiration being passed on. Obviously, everyone's seen the movie. Have we had any people here that have done a reboot? Fantastic. Over this group over here, so what, how, how many days are we talking? Four? Four days? Yeah. Six. You're on day six? Yep. Day seven. Day seven? Fantastic. Three, three days. You're on day three? How are you feeling? Good. Well, you don't need to call 911 for anyone on three no. days of news, right? <laughs> We're OK, we're all alive, we're, we're, we're hanging in there, right? America is in the midst of a brand new juicing craze, and I've got the man who some say started it all. Two years ago, Joe Cross was, in his own words, fat, sick, and nearly dead. I've got a thing called chronic urticaria, which is like a chronic rash. You got a what? Well, it's, it's an illness, you know, like a disease. To save his life, he did something radical. He hit the road with a juicer in tow. And I've got the juicer. Now, this stuff will save your life. Cheers. Good health. Ricky only fresh juice for 60 days. That decision transformed his health. So, anyone that done the reboots in the past, anyone done more than 20 days? Oh, wow. So, how long did you go for? 21. Okay. Oh, well, wow. lucky I chose 20 rather than 30, eh? Oh, wow. 30 days. Congratulations, fantastic. Thank you. And how did you feel? Get, tell me how you felt after 21 days. I felt great. I think the biggest difference was I was immediately able to go into a plant-based diet. I had no cravings. It was very easy to eat healthy. Yeah. Okay, so the good news is that um, I've been out on the road now with the with the movie. This message of like drinking and, and eating more fruits and vegetables, it um it seems to be catching on. And so I'm just lucky enough to be the person who can share my experience and then you can go on and share yours. And that's, that's how you can pay me back. Little shots here, be enough for everybody. She really loves green beans. She likes the juice, that's great. I love the sunnies. And I think this is how we make a big difference in the world. One person, one juice at a time. Cheers. Cheers. on Manly Beach, and it's been five years since we wrapped up Fat Sick and Nearly Dead. And at the time, I'd lost 82 pounds, I got off all medication, and I was feeling fantastic. Well, I've learned a lot these last five years, and one of the big things I've learned is, yeah, it was hard to drop the weight, but boy, is it tough keeping it off. So, I'm back to go on a journey to find out how you can stay healthy in predominantly an unhealthy world. Excuse me, guys, do you have five minutes to talk to us about making a documentary film? For what? Uh, about eating healthy. What do you think of the American diet? Um, it's failing. Do you think most Aussies are healthy, or do you think most Aussies are unhealthy? No. You reckon most people are healthy over here, or do you think most people no, are... Not really? Not. No. Americans eat for comfort. It's, like, so easy, too. You just drive up to a drive through window. It's so convenient. What do you call healthy food? Uh, healthy food is fruits, uh, nuts, uh, grains, um, anything that is fresh. Vegetables, home-cooked meals, stay away from the fast food. Good old grilled cheese. 
Always a favorite. Right. Um, pretty much anything with cheese on it, I'll eat it. <laughs> anything with cheese? Seriously. So you're a big cheese man. Oh, yeah. Can you say that again? What are vegetables? They're disgusting and they nasty. Vegetables? Yes, I don't eat them. One person I know who loves her veggies is Stacy Kennedy, the nutritionist I spoke to in my first movie. So when you first heard that I was going to do 60-day juice fast, what did you think? I was a little shocked. I thought it was very extreme and definitely not something that we would promote um, to the general public. Yeah, believe me, it was extreme. Right. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not telling anyone to do it. But people are talking to me about what I'm doing. And uh, they're, they're asking me and coming to me for advice. And really, I mean, I'm not an expert. I'm just a bloke who decided to make some changes and document those changes uh, as, a, as an example or you know, a lesson to others. It, it may be a good lesson, maybe not a good lesson. I'm not sure. A 60-day juice fast it sounds catchy and exciting, and that worked for you. Um, but the focus is absolutely long-term. We don't have a shortage of you know, really people losing weight so much in this country. There's a lot of diets and weight loss. Viewers are contacting us about something called the paleo diet. The fast diet. The G-free diet. The Mediterranean diet. Eating cotton balls to lose weight. You know, anyone can sort of go out and lose weight, but can you do it in a healthy way? Can you maintain that weight loss? And I think that that is where one of our biggest challenges is right now. He says he lost 37 pounds after eating just McDonald's for 90 days. A wake-up call about salt. We're eating far more salt than we should, and it's been linked to cardiovascular disease and stroke. A new study is shaking things up. It finds that eating less salt does not reduce the risk of having heart disease. And also eggs. Turns out they may be healthier than they were before. It's no yolk. A new study suggesting eating eggs could be just as dangerous as smoking. Are you confused? I know I am. I reckon the first challenge is sorting through all this nutritional information that we're bombarded with every day. And Dr. Ornish, a clinical professor of medicine at the University of California, San Francisco, joins us this I've been a Dr. veteran of all these different diet debates and Thank diet you. wars over the years, and I got really tired of doing that after a while because there's so much uh, heat and very little light. But I think that with you know the exceptions of some extreme views, um, most people, there's a consensus about what constitutes an optimal way of eating. And it goes something like this. To the degree that you can eat more towards a plant-based diet, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, legumes, soy products, in their natural, unrefined forms, that's optimal. Because it's not only low in the disease-causing substances, but it's also high in disease-preventing substances. There are literally hundreds of thousands of protective substances. And you find them mostly in fruits and vegetables and whole grains and legumes and so on. But also, you want to try to avoid um, too many refined carbs and sugar because when you go from, say, brown rice to white rice or from whole wheat flour to white flour, you're removing the fiber in the bran, and that's what fills you up, the, the fiber in the bran, before you get too many calories. You can only eat so many apples, you're going to get full before you get too many calories, but you can consume virtually unlimited amounts of sugar without getting full because you've removed the fiber in the bran that fill you up. And the fiber in the bran also slow the absorption of food from your gut into your blood. So if you just eat like the sugar and have a soft drink, your blood sugar spikes up, your pancreas makes insulin to bring your blood sugar back down, but over time those repeated surges of insulin both predispose to chronic inflammation, they accelerate the conversion of calories into fat, and they have lots of other unhealthy effects. So what I tell people is to say, look, food isn't good or bad. Some foods are healthier for you than others, but it's not so much a moral choice. It's just, you know, what do you want to do? This is a part of the world I never used to spend a lot of time in. I used to look at it as like, eh, vegetables, fruit, eh. Now, I kind of get like really excited when I, when I come to a place like this, like the produce section. All this colour just bouncing out at us. You know, and you've got your reds, your purples, your yellows, your oranges and your greens. And that has been a really big change. When you think about it, there's really only three things we can eat. Plants, animals and processed food. But for most of our history, we've only had two of those. Plants and animals. <laughs> Processed foods have really only come along in the last 70 years. Think of hunger this way. When your cells need supplies, they pick up the phone and call room service. A message is sent to the brain saying, 
Joe, we're hungry. Huh? Send food and send it now. Uh -huh. For most of our history, that meant either animals or plants, but mostly plants. <laughs> These days, most of us have replaced those plants with the new kid on the block, <laughs> processed food. <laughs> As a result of this, our cells are missing out on vital nutrients and they're not happy. They didn't get what they needed or ordered. So you'll get hungry again and quickly. Without these nutrients, those cells function less efficiently. So the problem isn't just what we're eating is making us sick. It's that we're not eating enough of what keeps us well. And that is why what you eat, combined with other lifestyle choices, plays such a huge role in determining your overall health. G'day Rebooters, Joe here. I have some uh, exciting news. We would love you to be in our next full-length feature film. How do you end up being in our film? Very simple. You make a video just like I'm doing right now. Hi, I'm Debbie. Hi, my name is Anup Anand and we're coming to you from Dubai. Hello, my name is Elva and I am Icelandic. Aloha Joe and Reboot team, aloha from Hawaii. This is Man Patero and I have Santa Bell here. <laughs> um, my biggest challenges to eating healthy are when I leave my house. Time you know, scheduling, the fact that I travel a lot. So I'm on the road, often I'm in airports, and hotels, and, there, and most of the things that are convenient for you to grab on the fly are not healthy for you at all. So this is basically my life these days, in and out of airports. to the airport now, about to fly to Vancouver. Arrived in Hamburg. I'm definitely coming back to Manila. Juicing is much more fun in the Philippines. Philippines yeah. Where am I right now? Toronto, Ontario. Sometimes I forget where I am. Okay, so we're in Seoul, South Korea. Juicing up a storm in the south of France. So I'm standing on the uh, Great Wall of China. I just want to show you what we've got here. Yes, the Oreo cookies. One of the problems when you juice a lot is you have to go here a lot. See that? So, so we are in um, London, and uh, here's what I do. I'm, you're actually in my house. I, I now live most of the time in hotels where there's a bed. There's my office over there. And um, I also have my office here. But that's kind of like my two offices, and this is what I do, and it's now early evening and we're about to head out and uh, hit the town. And a night in the town for me is talking about juice. Expecting a good turnout tonight. Maybe a hundred people. See you, mate. How are you, all right? Now, I'm going to ask the audience, stand up if you've done a reboot. OK, fantastic. Stay standing if you juiced for more than one day with just juice only. Keep your hands up if you've juiced for more than three days. So three days or more, keep it up. So more than 10 days. How about more than 20 days? There's a few other things that have changed. I have to wear glasses now. Hair's got a lot greyer. But still, I feel great. I feel young, feel good, feel healthy, feel alive, and I work really hard and I travel a lot. So uh, I'm, I'm hanging in there and I'm doing it and it's, uh, and it's working. It's filling up nicely, as you can see. Yes? Can I just say that you have quite literally saved my life? Oh, thank you very much. That's very kind of you to say. Um, I was diagnosed about three years ago with fibromyalgia. Um, which is chronic tiredness, chronic pain all over my body. I've now been juicing 
at least twice a day since May and I'm no longer on any medication. Um, I don't walk with a stick anymore. I have no pain and I feel absolutely amazing. I feel now I've got a life ahead of me instead of a death sentence. Congratulations, that's awesome. Okay, thank you. Well, I, I, I look at it as it's down to you. Please don't, don't think I get blasé about hearing it. Every time I hear it, I am just touched beyond, beyond words. So thank you for sharing with me that. that, that I, I'm... I suffer from Crohn's disease since I was like 17 years old and 32 now. After seeing Joe's movie last year, it inspired me to go out by a two set. And um, a few, within a few months, obviously, I was feeling better and don't necessarily need my medication anymore. So the guy inspired me to change my life. It's amazing how many people come up to me at the end and just tell me how uh, juicing and how eating more plant food has really changed and affected their lives. And I look at my Twitter feed or I look at Facebook. I mean, it gives me the strength, gives me the power, gives me the, the will to keep going. And uh, I, I'm, you know, they're my inspiration. Oh, I'll tell you what. A little tired. Look, it hasn't been easy, first to admit that, but over the six years, I kind of started out, as we all know, around 310, 320 pounds. I got down to 220 pounds. And right now I sit around 240 and my weight can change and it does go up between 240 and 250 depending on my travel and stress levels. Like I'm like anyone else and when things are going well and I'm in a routine, I tend to eat really well. But when stress comes into my life and I'm feeling the pressure, then uh, I tend to make poorer choices. I guess the big difference now is that uh, if I do go off the rails, I can always do another reboot and, and get back on track. I'm not perfect, but I have done my best to, uh, to try and amp up my fruit and vegetable intake. And, uh, you know, it sits around 40%. And that's not 40% of like what's on the plate, that's 40% of the calories. It sort of means breakfast and lunch to me is very plant-based and then dinner time. I'm still putting salads and veggies into it, but I might have processed or animal product then. We put lemon juice in olive oil. But to me, what's more important and what's more valuable out of my journey is that I'm not sick anymore and I don't take medication and that my blood pressure and my cholesterol are all in the normal range. And that, that's what gets me excited. That was good. Thank you so much. I decided I needed to improve my diet because I was tired of feeling tired all the time. It really wasn't even my decision. I had three bulging discs, bilateral sciatica, and scoliosis, and I could barely walk. I would go to my doctors all the time, and I would say, um, I'm broken. And they'd look at me, and I'd say, no, something's wrong. I just thought, it can't already be this bad. I'm only 31. It can't. My life can't be over. <laughs> but my life felt over. I was extremely sick. I decided I needed to improve my diet for my own health, uh, for my wife, to be around for her and for my kids especially. I have this beautiful son and this beautiful new human and I'm responsible for what goes into his body and that has had a huge impact on me just thinking about that. I realized that I needed to do something and I unfortunately realized that I needed to do something drastic. I needed to do something to change my life. Here was Joe and he'd done it. And if he'd done it, I wanted to see how. Whenever I feel like I've gone off the rails, I generally turn to a reboot. What's a reboot? It's a set period of time whereby I'm only gonna consume fruits and vegetables. You can eat or juice them or do both. For me, as you know, I'm a juice only kind of guy. Now you may think this is a little strange, but our bodies are used to periods when food was scarce. Imagine you're back in time and you're on the savannah and there's not a lot of food around. The first few days, you're gonna be doing it tough. You're gonna to be hungry and tired. You're gonna have pain and misery and you're not gonna to wanna to move. But hang in there, this is all part of survival. 
your body is giving you hard to ignore signals which remind you to eat. Since you're not getting as many calories as you're used to, your body will start burning its energy reserves stored in the fat and muscle. It's different for everybody, but for me, I burned 70% of my energy from fat and 30% from muscle reserves. Now around day three or four, your body's gonna say, Hold on a second, I don't know how he's ignoring all these signals I was sending. You see, making you tired and angry wasn't working. So it's time for plan B. Let's call this survival mode. First, the body will switch off hunger because that hasn't been helping. Then you'll experience better focus, better hearing, better eyesight, a better sense of smell, and lots of energy. All the things you need to find food. Now that hunger is in the past, you'll feel a million bucks. And because you've been flooding your system with a broad set of micronutrients, your cells are going to be doing cartwheels with joy. You've gone from the valley where you were sick and tired to the top of the mountain where you feel amazing. And now it's time for your reboot to end and for you to come back to the present day. You've now reset your taste buds and your body will crave healthier food. But this is only the beginning. The food choices you make after the reboot will determine if you stay on top of the mountain or start to slide down the hill. And the good news is there's always another reboot to get you back on top. What do you reckon the biggest challenge is for people today to be healthy? What do you reckon it is? Time. Uh Women problems. Women problems. problems. That so that's stuff. stress, right? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, that's little stress. Bit. Yeah, when you have problems, well, I'm just saying, like, yeah, if, I, yeah, yeah. If, you, if you've got problems, you, I run to sugar. What yes. do you run to? Um, I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> You're so busy, right? You've got life just overtakes yeah. you. And yeah. um, food and, and consumption isn't something that's at top of the mind for people. I reckon generally we know what's good for us. What do you reckon you should be eating to be healthier? Probably fruits and vegetables. Vegetables. Fruits and vegetables, and that's what I do. And we know what's bad for us. What would you say you eat the most of? Bad food. Bad food? Bad, bad food. food. Why? Because we love it, but um, it's, not bad. it's not good for my health. Do you know that? Yes, I know it now. <laughs> I've never met anyone that needed me to tell them that fruits and vegetables are good for you. So what are you eating there, mate? I eat the, like, uh, Bread. Sort of bread, uh... You're just eating it, you don't know what it is. <laughs> but we still continue to choose to eat things that aren't healthy. Well, American waistlines keep getting bigger. We all blame fast food, but what about cookbooks? Brian Wansink... I reached out to Brian Wansink, a former executive director of the USDA's Center for Nutritional Policy and Promotion and current professor at Cornell University. Brian has spent his entire career studying why you and I make the decisions we do when it comes to food choices. What we're going to look at here is we're going to look at this notion of licensing. Now, a lot of times when it comes to food, we look for excuses to give ourselves permission yeah. to eat whatever we want to, yeah. okay? And it's called licensing. Right. Now, uh, if this place is typical, we'll find about 20 things here that probably do that. All right, mate, after you. So what pops out to you here, Brian? What's the first thing you sort of notice as we come into the cafe? The well, first thing I notice is that there's no way I'm going to get a dessert with lunch, OK? Because it's just not what I think about. Mm -hmm. But if I'm waiting three minutes in line, I'm going to say, no, 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 no. But I'm going to get here. What's going to happen is I'm going to say, you know, I was a good boy. I said no to every one of those first six items. I deserve something. And I'll say yes to that last right, item. Right, right. And this is licensing. Yeah. This is because I said no. I'm now giving myself a yes, yes when I get here to pick up the, the muffin or the yeah, cookie. Brownie. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I've, I've been a good boy, I've been a good boy, I've been a good boy, I've been a good boy. Now I need a treat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I can see that. <laughs> Let's take a look at okay, what cool. else they do. Uh, we take a look here at the ice cream. They don't say, do I want ice cream, yes or no? I kind of go, hey, does anything look good in there? And I'm instantly making a decision. So there's five or six decisions that could go on just Oh, yeah, here. yeah. And it's not just which one we want, but it's do I want it now? Am I going to have a big dinner tonight? Things like this. 
So when I come in here and I see, I mean, we've got a whole wall here <laughs> of the menu. So you told me that we make 200 decisions regarding food a day. Are these all the decisions that you're talking about? It's not just decisions as to whether we're going to choose the California Dreaming or the Sweet Onion Sandwich. It's all the decisions we're not even aware of. The thing about most of these 200 decisions is we're only aware that we make about 30 or 40 of them. Right. And so there's all these things in our environment that can nudge or bump. 170 of these decisions to lead us to eat a little bit more, to choose a little bit worse than we otherwise would, because we're not even aware we're making them. Right. And you think you deserve it. You're going to buy whatever you want. We, we should go then. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I'm glad we got out of there without buying anything. Yeah, that, was, that wasn't too hard. But that was only our first stop, right? <laughs> That's right. So what's our next stop? It says, what, healthy Mexican restaurant? Yeah, I, I think it's, it's, it's healthy if you eat half as much. OK, well, let's go <laughs> check it out. I think, Brian, that many people, what they're struggling with is that they feel that the odds are against them. They feel that there is just like, it's just all too hard. Mm. When we talk about the odds being against them, how much of an effect does marketing have on people's food choices and, and what they eat? Anything that makes a food more attractive makes it more uh, appealing to us. And it's, but it's not just what a marketer does, it's, it's uh, what our grandmother does when she says, oh, here's grandmother's you know, special apple pie. You, you know, essentially, she's doing the same sort of marketing that the food companies are in, in many ways. Where we can make the biggest difference quickest is essentially by, by not marketing food to ourselves, by not keeping a cereal box sitting right in the middle of the counter where we can walk by and grab a handful every time we, we want to. You know, by not having the least healthy food in our kitchen be the first one we see when we open the cupboard. I mean, we find you open the cupboard, the first food you see you're three times as likely to take in the fifth food you see. Right. So, so, so why stack the deck against ourselves right. by having the least healthy, whatever, chocolate-covered potato chips with fudge <laughs> right front and center? Right. And a lot of these changes are, are very easy things we can make. So we don't stack the deck against ourselves. What we can, oh, hey, thank you. Oh, thank you very yummy, much. Yummy, yummy, yummy. For me now to have these here, I would and easily could devour all of that. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's our moral obligation because yeah. it's in front of us. We're not going to waste food. The only way to change this, the only way to keep from doing that is essentially to change our environment. It's a lot easier to change our food environment than to change our mind, mm. which is why we just put you that put over, them there. over there. The one thing that a person can control immediately tonight is what they do in their own kitchen. Right. Since doing the reboot, one rule that I made that helps me stay healthy is that I am going to keep my kitchen and my refrigerator stocked with fruits and vegetables. And having things readily available, um, strawberries washed in a bowl, blueberries, bananas on the counter, I'm more likely to grab a banana if it's sitting in front of me. My top tips for eating healthier are keep it out of the house. And so um, out of sight, out of mind. Um, if I keep chips or cookies or whatever in the house, um, I will eat it. And so even if it's not mine to eat, my husband will bring home junk food for him and I'll end up eating it. So we've now established that the home is a healthy place and it's really made a big difference. So I'm Dr. Carrie Dayulis. I am an orthopedic spine surgeon. I have struggled with weight issues my entire life. And while I was pregnant with my son, I had a lot of complications related to that. And I ended up in the hospital for well over a month. And they said, you could have a stroke. You could permanently lose your vision. After my son was born. My vision stabilized and all of those symptoms were going away, but they didn't know what started it, so there's always the fear that it could come back. And I really started to seek out ways to get things in balance. What do you want in your juice? I'll show you. All right. I got everything clean. 
A friend of mine had brought up this movie that she had seen, Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, and said, hey, what do you think about juicing? So that weekend I watched the movie. I went out that day and I bought a juicer and started doing the juice fast. And that's when I did the 42 days. I haven't had a headache since. I haven't had any problems with my vision since and felt better than I had ever felt in my life. I didn't realize how bad I felt for so long until I felt this good. And in fact, losing weight is probably an important but small portion of the whole equation. Good. Just the introduction of juice into our household has significantly increased the amount of fresh fruits and vegetables that the entire family eats. And I think that's really the main benefit of all of this. What'd you say, Lou? Found you. Found me. And now it's easy for me to see something's a little out of balance. You know, there are weekends where life is crazy and pizza happens and pudding happens and parties happen. And we don't focus on it. And the next week we eat a lot more fruits and vegetables to balance it out. We got guys, step on up. I got steaks, steaks, some more steaks. So, mate, what are you eating there? French fries. You like them? Mm-hmm. How much do you like them? Um, I'd say they're my third favorite food. Third favorite? Do you eat a lot of fruit and vegetables? No, not really. Not really, no. no. And why do you reckon that is? Um, you got kids? Yeah, two. How many kids? Two kids? Two yeah. kids. And um, what do they like to eat? Uh, anything not the best, not the vegetables. What about fruits and veggies? Do you ever eat fruits and veggies? Do you like fruits and vegetables? What's your favourite vegetables? Um, cucumbers. Cucumbers? Are fruits and vegetables a big part of your diet at home? Absolutely. So what, what advice would you have for some other parents that have kids that are not eating their veggies and their fruits? Try, try and try again. So if they don't eat it, continue to give it to them. And eventually, they'll try it and they may even like it. I find that if they help prepare it, they're a bit more um, interested in eating it. I kind of grew up with, you know, sitting at, I couldn't get out the table until I finished my greens, so that's kind of how I grew up. And then at least now, I look back on it and I thank my mom, because now I know the true importance of it. <laughs> the last time I caught up with Stacey Kennedy, she suggested that I should meet her husband, Russ. He's a behavioral psychologist. Scoop that into the bowl. I thought he could shed some light on how we can help our kids get on the path to healthy eating. I'll smash it. We're setting these kids up with habits that they will take their whole lives. You know, let me give you two quick experiences that you could have for dinner. One experience is starting to hear the pots and pans and the plates and the silverware. They have these very distinct sounds. And over time, I'm just gradually brought into this experience of eating. Here's the other experience. The doorbell rings. Someone's holding two pizzas, and now you're ready to eat. So one of those situations, my body had all this time to prepare itself. My stomach muscles relaxed. The stomach organ expanded. The whole alimentary canal starts to lubricate so that the food can get down there easier. And this happens over this time while I'm preparing the food. So now when I eat the food, my body is in this wonderful place to absorb as much of that good stuff as it can. And then I have this wonderful experience with my family. So even this is kind of creating our own culture for our boys. So that as they grow up, healthy eating is just this natural byproduct of living a life that he has deemed healthy, not because we shoved it down his face. It's because he's done it and he feels good about it. Most of us grow up learning to eat from our parents. And some of us grow up learning to eat well from our parents. But what's really knocked my socks off, and I wouldn't have believed it unless I saw it for myself, is young kids teaching their mum and dad how to eat better. So I heard there was a story that you wanted to tell me that you were going to go to a fast food restaurant, and then what did you say to mum? Mm. I told her, no, I don't want to go there because they have uh, junk food that, like, it's not good for you and your body. So where did that come from? Because I don't know too many six-year-olds who would say that to their mum. It came from my sister. Oh, really? 
Okay, so now the truth comes out. So do you want to tell me what the story was, Elise? Yeah, I learned it in wellness. Everybody told us that kids wouldn't be the way to go. Get the adults first, then the kids will follow. It's been the opposite. We get the kids, and then they bring their parents into it. How are we going to grow a healthy body? What are we going to do? By eating healthy and doing things that are healthy. Eating all kinds of fruits and vegetables. Fruits and vegetables. I like that. Welcome, everybody. And because the parents and kids do it together, they actually get to learn together. The parent doesn't have to be the bad guy saying, eat your broccoli. The kid's the one saying, I want to eat some broccoli, mom. Let's do this together. And it becomes a really neutral environment for parents and children to learn about healthy eating and then to take what they learned and actually take it home and implement it in their family's lives. It's because of Delani that I eat healthier. When she started bringing recipes home to make a smoothie, like every single day, please, mommy, buy the ingredients, please. To me, that was sort of a sign. My four-year-old at the time is coming home handing me recipes to eat healthier. I'm going to do it. Who liked the fruit salad? That fruit salad was so good. You guys did such a great job. I, I, I eat salad every day. What does mommy? Mom. Your mum just eats quinoa, nothing else. She only lives on quinoa. Your mum lives on quinoa. If we can create a generation of change in East Hampton, then other communities can do it, and the whole world could do it. We could really change what's a, what could happen to our children. What's your name? Ethan. Hi, Ethan. How are you, mate? Hi. And you are? Liam, how are you? Talk me through how you got started, because I'm sure there's lots of mums that would love their six-year-old to get excited about the green juice. I started with a bit more fruit. I'd put in, let's say, watermelon, apple, orange, and then spinach and carrot. Yeah. So I'd incorporate just a couple of vegetables in there, which she wouldn't really even know was happening and then we'd move up from there. So then I would take out, let's say, you know, the, the orange and pop in, you know, anything from a beetroot to, you know, um, romaine lettuce or something along those lines. Since adding a daily glass of juice to the family's diet seven months ago, mum, Larissa, has lost over 40 pounds. But she tells me this is only a small part of the benefits the family has seen from the change. In your note to me, you mentioned that the young fella here has had some health issues, health problems. Yes. Can you just talk me through and give me a, a bit of a background as to what the poor little fella's had to go through? Well, when Ethan was two and a half, mm. he was, um, we were actually playing and running around and he started saying that his ankle was really sore. And then one day he just stopped walking. And I took him to the hospital and he was diagnosed with um, arthritis, juvenile arthritis, that was in one side of his body at that point. So it was in his left ankle, knee and elbow. To me, arthritis was something that when you're older you get, not that a, a kid at two and a half is going to have to deal with. And then over the past four years, it's just gotten worse. It had spread to then his right side, and then just before we started juicing, it affected his neck, and then his eyes also developed arthritis. Wow. So did they put medication to him? Did they have him take pills? So much. He, um, he, and he's still on some of it. We're trying to lower it at the moment. He's on something called methotrexate, yep. which um, is essentially a mild form of chemotherapy, really. Right. And that's trying to put it into remission. And then he was on steroid in, um, in his eyes for a while there, which they've taken him off since, which I'm so happy to say. And he's um, daily anti-inflammatory. So a lot of stuff for a, a little kid. For a six-year-old, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So he's been juicing for how long are we talking now? Six months or? About that, mm -hmm. And you've seen a dramatic improvement yourself? The first thing I noticed, to be quite honest, was behavior. I noticed that his behavior calmed down, and at school he was just a bit more receptive. But I, I truly do think that he has been in less pain. And I think that being in less pain will then make him less irritable. And so, Ethan, do you feel better since you've been juicing? You do? What else do you notice? Um, 
that I'm getting taller? <laughs> You're getting taller? You think that the juice is actually making you taller? Really? Vegetables. Oh, the vegetables are making you strong. I like your thinking, mate. Can I have a wee cheers to that? <laughs> Perfect. How sure are you that by bumping up his nutrient intake with the veggies and the plants by juicing, it's had a big impact? How sure are you? 100%. 100%. There's absolutely no doubt in my mind that I have done nothing but brilliant things for his health now and his health in the future to, to incorporate fruits and vegetables as a daily part of their, their diet. <laughs> you right there, Liam? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So another new day, another new city, and it's time to get a juice or get a smoothie or get something into my body for breakfast. Now, one of the ways I use the community is I will ping out and say, hey, I'm in Adelaide, um, where can I get a juice? And I've done that this morning, and Melissa, she has come back to me and said, try goodies and grains. And I've tapped it in my maps, and apparently it's just around the corner. So uh, time to uh, load up on some micronutrients. Give me veg, give me veg, give me vegetables. They're the key to one's longevity. He's down here. Give me veg, give me veg, give me vegetables. Because health is my priority. All right, we'll go down here and have a look. You know where goodies and grains is? It is a bit of a maze in here, but I'm sure I'll find it. Down there. Give Turn to the right. Is it in this lane? And forgive me if I seem obsessed. Give me veg, give me veg, give me veg. Here it is. Organically grown is always best. Give me veg, give me veg, give me vegetables. The key to one's longevity. Okay, so what's the most popular green juice? The glorious greens. Glorious greens. Yes. And what's the most popular smoothie? The green smoothie. Perfect. So I'm gonna have one of each, same, same size. Thank you. Thank you very much. You juice at home? Yep. What do you make at home? What do we make at home with your juice? Smoothie. What do you put in your smoothies? Banana. Banana. Chocolate. Chocolate. That doesn't sound like a smoothie to me. That sounds like a milkshake. Here's the green smoothie. Ah, oh, thank you. Okay. And the glorious green juice. Thank you very much. And do you like green juices? Do you like the green ones? Yeah. Cheers, girls. On my nose. <laughs> right. See you later. Bye. Part of what I've learned in 36 years of doing this is what really enables people to make sustainable changes. Even more than being healthy, people want to feel free and in control. And as soon as I tell somebody, eat this, don't eat that, do this, don't do that, not only is it not helpful, it's usually counterproductive because they usually immediately want to do just the opposite. So instead of saying foods are good or bad, foods aren't good or bad, food is just food. But some foods are clearly healthier for you than others. So that's different than a moral judgment. What matters most is your overall way of eating and living. If you indulge yourself one day, it doesn't mean you cheated or you're bad, just eat healthier the next. You didn't have time to exercise one day, do a little more the next. You, you don't have time to meditate for an hour, do it for a minute, you get the idea. Yeah. The more you change, the better you yeah. get. Now what's interesting, it's not like we found there's one set of dietary recommendations for reversing or preventing heart disease, another one for diabetes, a different one for prostate cancer. It's the same for all of these. The more you change, the more you move in a healthy direction, the more you improve in every way we can measure, in every metric. So explain okay. that to me. What sort of change are we talking about? The more they change their diet, the more they exercise, the more they did meditation and yoga, the more love and intimacy they had in their life, right. the more they improve. And it comes out of your own experience, not because somebody told you that. You just say, oh, when I do this, I feel good. When I eat that, I don't feel so good. So maybe I'll eat more of this and less of that. Mm -hmm. And if I want to, you know, indulge myself, I'm not cheating, which again has that whole moralistic idea. I'm just going to indulge myself. That's mm -hmm. part of a healthy diet too. Yeah. Makes sense to me. But also, just focusing on the behavior isn't enough. We have right. to work at what's underlying that behavior. And for many people, because of the breakdown of the social networks that used to give people a sense of connection and community, there's a lot of loneliness and depression. Mm. That's why it's important to look at our diet, not just in isolation, but as part of a larger context. And you yourself said, when I'm stressed or I'm tired, I want to reach for sugar. Mm. For someone else, it might be fat. For someone else, it might be salt. 
why are people acting this way? And, and when you talk with them, more often than not, they'll tell you it's because it helps them get through the day. The real epidemic isn't just obesity or heart disease or diabetes. It's the de depression and loneliness it's in isolation. But we can break that. Spending the time with our friends and family isn't just a luxury that we do after we've done all the important stuff. It is the important stuff because feelings connect us. And when we feel connected, then it makes it easier to make these kinds of changes in diet and lifestyle. And good advice. How about we'll start over here, and any, I'm going to do questions. We'll, we'll move around, so we'll try and do it this way. Any questions over in this group over here? Yes. During the movie, you came in touch with the, the truck driver that you, uh, what's his name? Phil. Phil. Have you had any news from him recently, how he's doing? Or his yeah, I spoke to Phil last night, actually. <laughs> so, so Phil is working in Detroit. He's moved up there. He was driving trucks. He went back to driving trucks. So he's still struggling with the, the being solo and being alone, and that, that sort of tends him to get off the rails. But he's off medications, and you know, I mean, I, I don't. You know, there are people that are going to be more successful than others at this. This is not like a silver bullet. You know. So I'm constantly being asked how Phil is. Joe, this is Phil. Is it too late to ask for help? People really responded to his struggle, to his journey, and they rejoiced in his success. I felt that my journey was equivalent to the Forrest Gump running across America and people just coming along and following. And Phil was the first person to follow. He was really the first person who said, you know what, I liked what that guy did and I saw what he did. I want to try that. And um, it, it's Phil's story that has um, inspired all these millions of people. Every day, four or five people see the film, four or five people find me on Facebook, say what a true inspiration I am that I've changed my life around. And I just went back to old habits. After the 60 days, I had some friends helping me out with healthy eating and working at the Y there in the town. I was doing really well. And uh, so I maintained my weight all through the next year. So I'm uh, here with Phil Staples. Hi. And, uh... Phil and I are in Massachusetts for the screening of Fat, Sick and Nearly Dead. Uh, as you can see, the movie changed my life. I still fit into the shirt two and a half years later. About six months after that, I met a girl and moved in with her a couple months later. We got married, but wasn't ready for it. Shouldn't have done that. Uh, wasn't ready for that. I left her and had to get divorced. And things went slowly downhill then. No one to talk to. I mean, that's kind of what started it. I was alone, and I hate it. And I would try, try and get my health back, try and, you know, try and juice on my own, try and eat healthy again, and then something would come along and head right back to the fast food place and eat my crap, you know. I just wanted to keep hiding. I didn't want to be seen. Well, then I called Joe. Um, I didn't explain things to him. I said, I'm, I'm having trouble. And that was a big relief just to say that, you know, just to get that out. Because Joe, here's Joe, you know, okay, we'll work on it. You know, I care about you. And that's what I needed to hear. Struggles continued, but is what I needed to hear. Once Phil put up his hand and asked for help, I knew he needed more than just fruits and vegetables. So I asked Russ Kennedy to wander up talk to Phil and see what kind of changes Phil could make. What I want to hear more about is your experience with beforehand, before you order, before you get your Baconator and Frosty, what emotion you have going through you? I'm empty. Empty. So you're saying you feel kind of devoid? Yeah. That sadness, that emptiness? Well, it's, it's beyond sadness. It's coldness. Yeah, it and it's like, you know, when the weight's gaining and you feel that way, 
you know, pardon my French, but the thought always comes with me. <laughs> you know, yeah. let's go get this. It makes me feel better. Um, when you say it makes me feel better, though, that's kind of what. But it's just for the briefest moments. So it's like a sensation. You're like, right. oh. It's, it's like having that cigarette or having those that's drugs or that drink. You know, it's just for the briefest moments. And when, all, when the food is gone, the emotion's back. When the emotion's back, the sadness comes. <laughs> when we do a case study and we look at Joe and we look at Phil, there's a lot of lessons to be learned. And, when, and some of the lessons that we can learn is, is that the team that Joe surrounded with made a big difference, and the lack of team that Phil had made a huge difference. However, the really important thing to take home from this is that the environment and the situation that Phil ended up in is amazingly common. You know, he had some emotional difficulties. He had a divorce. It was very difficult for him. And he got very disconnected. And his lapse turned into a relapse. So where Joe was successful having the right team, getting the right importance and meaning, and having people in his life who would call him out on it, Phil didn't have such a system. The only connection that he had to food was the temporary sensation of contentment. So I feel that community and the system that you make within that community acts as this great buffer against dif difficult emotional experiences that we're all gonna go through. I mean, to go through these things is to be human. And it is what Joe put in place. He put a community around him that gave him a great buffer zone that keeps him accountable and it keeps him on on the high path, on the healthy path. Well, in our practice, when someone first comes to us, we kind of treat it like an emergency time. Like, your house is on fire, we gotta put this fire out first. And then, can we get help and support by having these healthful and healthy relationships? And then the third thing we really have to do is control our environment. Mm. Bring out the burger. Now this was a quarter pound before it was cooked. Yep. Six pieces of bacon. Bacon. Mm -hmm. So we got the, the fries, and that, that that doesn't. I've seen some fries are much bigger than that. That's still pretty big though. That's like a yep. whole potato itself. And a half. So if we did a calorie count in here, what are your guesses? There's probably about a good four thousand calories in just one setting. And you're thinking you were having this more than one time in a day. There are times I have it three times. Three times. Yeah. I mean, I, we know physiologically this would mm -hmm. hit you in a biochemical way. Yep. That would release a lot of those body's chemicals that would kind of alleviate some of your mm -hmm. difficulties. So you weren't, you weren't crazy when you thought that you were getting some type of relief. However, you can get much better relief with other things. So I, I want to do something with this. I want to do something with this that you're going to remember because mm -hmm. I want to destroy the, its, whole, it, its relationship in your life. I do too. Because if we get this relationship out, we can get a good one in. Exactly. This is where crap goes. Crappy go. And... How you doing, Reed? Calories of chocolate-ish. <laughs> French fries, a cheeseburger. Look at that bacon, Double huh? bacon cheeseburger, son of Baconator and a bacon baked potato with cheese-ish sauce. With side of bacon. <sighs> Say goodbye. Best way to burn those kind of calories. <laughs> I bet you that fire goes for hours there, Robert. <laughs> well, you can even see some of the burgers in there. Besides feeling heavy when I walk, I actually feel pretty good. You know, I don't have my urticaria. I don't have that pain and blistering, thank God and I don't have to go back to those nasty medications. My goal is to get back, you know, swimming, slowly walking, eventually I'll probably get into a bicycle. You know, I realize now what I didn't do. I didn't have that support group. It's the only way I'm gonna beat this, I think. After all that fat and all that stuff, I swore this would've been burning all day long. Mm -hmm. So just like with your body, it, yeah. it seems to have a lot of energy, but what but did it burn for like four minutes? Four minutes, it's good. It's like nothing. Mm -mm. It's just empty calories. Empty. My biggest challenges to eating healthy are I don't have much support, so it's very difficult at times to make appropriate choices. My biggest challenges to eating healthy are I live in a house with teenagers and several other adults, and 
they don't all want to eat what I want to eat. If you watch television, everything is food related. Um, just driving down the road, you know, you've got fast food and restaurants all over the place. It's good to have somebody or a, a group of people that you can go to and talk to and, um, you know, um, just the, the accountability. My support system is my wife and my little sister. And my support system is my family and my husband. My support system was my church. Definitely the gym, people at the gym. The people around me were getting sick of me talking about this all the time. And, and so I needed to reach out somewhere else. So I went online. I looked Joe up online and found the movie, found his website, and that was it. If I take a look at how my life's changed, not only am I well again and off the medication, I feel better, I'm happier. See these over here? I love those. Pan au chocolat. It's, it's also my career and what I do. You know, I used to invest my capital into companies and do a bunch of things. But now I've had this whole sort of change of attitude about, uh, about business and about what it is that I do with my life. In the past, it was all about work and not about health. That's what got me into trouble in the first place. So uh, here we go. And you can tell, you can tell it's Reboot Headquarters because who else has green juice photos on their wall? Hey guys. Good, how are you? And what I've done here is I've pulled out some of the groups and what they're, what they're talking about within our community side. Right, cool. So for example, what you've got here is the Reboot Juice Lounge, and it's a group, it's somebody posting, knowing that they're looking for positive people, um, sharing both triumphs and struggles. So you're finding a community of like-minded people who are there to help. And so, in creating this company, this online community, it's giving me a way to marry up what I do with my personal beliefs when it comes to health. And in doing so, it's created something much larger than myself. And in, the, in one day somebody will be posting because they're struggling, and the next day they're posting because they're giving the support that somebody else gave them. Great. And it's, it's full of it. The community site is full of examples of that. I have friends all over the world now who are my cheerleaders and my confidants. When I hit that wall on day 15 and I wanted to quit, they would not let me. Uh, I had people that I don't ever really talk to telling me I can do it and being motivational. Sometimes it's like, oh, I'm doing so horrible, and then I go read somebody else's story. It's like, nah, suck it up, cupcake. You're doing good. <laughs> you know, I've uh, helped other people uh, by juicing, and um, helping others keeps me motivated. And it's just nice to know that there's somebody in my in my uh, area that is on the same page as me. I reached a point where I decided I wanted to change my life. And I talked this over with my brother. He told me about the documentary that he had watched online, and he thought the documentary would really help me. I watched it over and over and over until it sank into my spirit. And so I decided to myself, if someone in the U.S. can do it, someone in Africa can do it. And I live in Nairobi, Kenya, beautiful city. I decided I was going to do juicing, and I was going to take the path that Joe Cross had, had done. I feel like a brand new person. I mean, when you look at me and you look at those pictures that were there, that I had taken before, like some in December, you can't even believe it's the same person. I'm totally different. Mind, spirit, body, this is a whole different person. It has changed me. For Kenyans, juicing is a new phenomenon. So I, I didn't have people here who would uh, like support me in, in the real sense, but I got my support online. And people from thousands of miles in the US, in, the, in, in Australia, really, really encouraged me. You need the support. You can't do just by yourself. So 
So, mm -hmm. how are the first three days of your fast? They were challenging. They were? Yeah. What did you experience? What did you... I was feeling dizzy, uh -huh. headache, rashes on my face. Your face broke mm -hmm. out. But I told you to You had told that. me at least. Yeah. Mm -hmm. ah, still at mm -hmm. I did not do this journey for myself. I did it for others. We want spinner. I want others to hear this is a lifestyle change. You can do it for three days, you can do it for seven days. It's just about getting yourself to a point where you want to take charge of your life and just change your life for the better. Take rain and take charge of your life today. So we're back walking the streets of Guthrie, Oklahoma. I was here six years ago, and uh, I was sort of somewhere on my journey. I'm not quite sure. Somewhere in the 40s, I think, of Just Juice. And uh, I remember the town quite well. The hotel I stayed in was just up here. There's a laundry mat. I needed that laundry, I can tell you that. And then just beyond that was Terry's gun shop. Well, so, I look like I know a lot about that. How many pounds are you now in total? About 320. <laughs> but you know, my brother's a doctor. I've watched him struggle with being a vegetarian his whole life and now dying of that cancer. And I think it's a choice people make. I decided that if I'm going, I'm going happy. I'm a happy, you know, yeah. I'm a happy fat guy. I think I'll play Santa Claus in the upcoming auction that we're yeah, right. So what was really interesting through the power of social media was that I got a, a note just recently saying, hey, you should go and check in on Terry because um, Terry saw the movie. He saw himself, and uh, Terry's made a few changes. So um, I'm back to see what sort of changes Terry's made. Been a while, mate. Jeez, you're looking different, mate. A little bit. Jeez, you are, aren't you? You made a, hey. I went from a 56 to a 44 in pants. How about that? Jeez, you look good. Now you're a happy thin guy. A little bit. <laughs> not where I need to be. Oh, Angie, but... nice to see you again. How are you? Good. This is my old chair, isn't it? That's your chair. Still got it. <laughs> so, mate, six years since I've been here. You've probably forgotten all about me even coming in. What happened when you saw it? What, was the, what were the thoughts? Well, the thoughts were, uh, God, I look big. <laughs> you should have seen yourself on a big screen. Yeah. You're lucky you only watch it on Netflix. You know, I was on a breathing machine. Yeah. I had five or six bottles of pills every day. What uh, probably motivated me the most was my daughter came and said uh, she wanted me to be alive when she uh, got married, so. And she said, you were the ticket, so I followed what you said for the past several years, and it's made a huge impact on my life. Good on you. Well, that's, that's a good motivation to be there for your daughter's wedding. And all the medications are gone. I don't go to sleep at 5 o'clock every night. You know, I get up, I walk around, I'm on the school board now, I try to help people. I'm on a charity here in town that raises money for kids, coats for kids, and I do the pump, pass, and kick in this town for the kids, and we had 100 kids show up, and I couldn't do any of that without you. Well, congratulations, mate, that's, that's awesome. That and really I is. really appreciate it, because what you did was uh, motivate me, and it, it was that enabled me now to, uh, before I was ineligible to be a bone marrow donor for my brother. Right. He's a surgeon. Yeah. I remember you talking about your brother having, having cancer. And now I can be a bone marrow donor. Uh, we're going to Phoenix to the uh, Mayo Clinic on the 14th of this month. Right, right. And now that I've lost all this weight and I'm off the medication, I'm the only 10 out of 10 match for him in the world. Isn't that incredible? How hard was it for you to go from the old Terry to the new Terry? The first two weeks, I, I, I've had a lot of cravings. When you get tired, when you get stressed out, yeah. food's a crutch for people. And, uh, you know, I would used to go get, I'll go get a couple ice cream bars. One wasn't enough, and I didn't yeah. want to walk there twice. Oh, I know. <laughs> I know the feeling. <laughs> so I've even done three sometimes. <laughs> now I get, now I go get, uh, like, I'll, I'll have things like pickles. I'll have uh, olives. I'll have pickled okra. We do not have soda in our house right now. The candy bars hidden, the potato chips by the bags. You know, it's just... Little things. Little things. And it, when you put a bucket full of little things there, it starts yeah. adding up, and it really has for us. Yeah. Because you've put the right fuel in, you actually 
feel energetic, you don't want to sit on the couch, you actually want to get out and move. Have you found that? Like you actually end up doing stuff that you didn't think you were going to do. I hated to go shopping with my girls. They could wear you out in the mall. But now I can go walk the entire day with them. Yeah. You know, I can go walk uh, at trade shows and, and places that before I would walk, it would kill me. Now, losing a little me made a big difference. And it's going to impact other people's lives besides just mine. We've got a wave of people eating better. And we talked to uh, friends at restaurants and said, look, you don't have a lot of healthy stuff on the menu. And they have built a salad bar at a local restaurant here. They've stocked food for our request. There we go. Harry's all hooked up now. And there are people coming out of the woodwork to eat a little healthier, but still get to go to a restaurant. Yeah. And it's fantastic. The mayor started a community garden. The people in our town are, are, have changed. We have started growing food for people who need it. So it may not be financially. They may need it to get rebooted, too. Right. They can get it right here in our community. We've got, like, tomato here. Yes, sir. And have a look here. They've even got some kale. Look at this. Beautiful kale down here. I mean, I do love my kale. Back over here, we want to make sure we took care of the kids. We wanted to make sure we got right. everything pollinated. So we have a butterfly garden. And during the early spring, summer, you'll find hundreds of different butterflies out here. And then all the kids come and they like to they see it. They love it. And that gets them involved, understanding yes. where their food comes from, and great stuff. Is it, Terry been a bit of inspiration, is he, in the he town? He has been. He has been. He helped me. I've lost weight like Terry. Uh, not as much, but I'm working on it. So. Oh, you look good. Thank you, sir. You're also tall. How tall are you? Five feet, 21 inches. Oh, yeah, OK. <laughs> I'm, I'm down here. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. Mark, awesome, mate. Imagine if every little town in America did this. It'd be great. It would be great. It'd be fabulous. Great example. When I say you had an impact and your path you set me on made a difference and can make a difference in other people's lives, I can show them. And I mean, I tell you what, you look happier. You look, you look 10 years younger to me. I feel a lot better. Yeah. Are you a champion? You're an absolute champion. Congratulations. I feel a lot better. And Fantastic. I just mate. really want to say thanks. It made a difference. I appreciate being a little catalyst, but at the end of the day, mate, you're the one who's made the difference. You've done the hard yards, and uh, it's just fantastic to see. And I want to get that photo of you walking the, your beautiful daughter down the aisle, all right? You've got to make sure you send that to me. I'll send that to you. Guthrie today is a totally different town to the one I visited a few years ago. It's just unbelievable to see how a few people making positive changes can have such a ripple effect throughout the whole community. And Guthrie's not alone. I've met people all across the world who are turning to fresh juice and fruits and vegetables as a way of revitalising their health and the health of those around them, including Mary Beth of McMinnville, Tennessee. After recovering from cancer, she started her own juice business even delivering fresh juice to cancer patients free of charge. Thank you for bringing this. As soon as you're able. Yes. People are very skeptical, but we have people from Nashville that come here. Other communities, other counties around us are coming here and they're all wanting to start something like this. I don't know what we've done, but I think we've gave people permission to step outside the box. I want all of y'all to feel as good as I do. So, juice on, right? And how about this? Empty front yards and vacant lots all over the place have been turned into organic gardens and farms. This Brooklyn High School is a great example. This community has incredible high rates of obesity, of diabetes, and these are diseases that typically affect folks that are eating bad food, that don't have access to fresh fruits and vegetables. And so here's a way for students to really work hard at giving back to the community, but also helping themselves. It's a little bit more expensive, but it tastes better, it's more fresh, healthier. So it really did change the way I eat and the way I look at things. Long lines in Midtown Detroit today for the grand opening of the new Whole Foods Market. It's also exciting to see how a corporation like Whole Foods Market, normally associated with affluent suburbs, is trying to become a valued part of this inner city Detroit community. Well, Detroit's an experiment. We've gone in with a different model. We spent less capital on the store. 
It's a smaller store. I don't think a healthy diet's that expensive, but I think we can make it even less expensive if we consciously work at it, keep our costs down. So one of the things we're gonna be doing in Detroit is that we do tie together sort of the local food community. So we're excited about Detroit. It's, I can tell you, it's off to a terrific start. And it's a nice place to bring the kids because you're teaching them not only the value of what food is, but the health of the food that they're consuming as well. We truly are witnessing what I see as a tsunami of awareness of the power of plant food. And this change is also extending into the world of medicine. I've been really surprised at the number of doctors that have reached out to me to share their personal and patient success. One of those is Sheila Carr, a cardiologist at Cedar sinai Medical. I spend most of my time uh, practicing preventative cardiology these days and that's where I got interested in what you do because uh, you by your dietary principles you land up from my point of view lowering blood, um, cholesterol values cleaning up blood vessels improving diabetes improving hypertension all of which lands up having a good plumbing system in the body so my question is what do you think is actually going on in terms of the repair side when people switch their diet and they sort of move a away from a lot of this processed and refined foods, high in sugars, high in fat, high in salt, and they move towards more plants. What actually goes on in, I mean, does this stuff actually get eaten away? My feeling is humans were never meant to be sick. This stuff is nothing but a side effect of junk that's being introduced into the body. Side effect of a lifestyle. Side effect of a lifestyle, absolutely. And so I think with time, the body, by its natural healing properties, tends to go back to normal. So in other words, tries to regress this. Right. You know, I, I tell patients that, you know, you have a choice between eating healthy and living a normal lifestyle or me giving you more poisons to counteract the poison you just had. Yeah. Because the medications work, no question. But nothing's without a side effect. Yeah. We know for sure 15% of cholesterol is from what we eat, and the rest of it's what we, uh, we make in the body. It's genetic. Right. But having said so, 15% is huge. None of the medications we use reduces cholesterol by 15%. Right. And I've actually managed to have people get off blood pressure medications, off diabetic pills, just by this concept of eating raw fruits and vegetables. Yeah. So someone's at home, they're watching this, and they want to avoid going down this path of wreck and ruin. What are they got to do? You said, what's the secret? Moderation. Yeah. So eat the right food, but not processed food, but also exercise. Now, the movement can be swimming, dancing, walking in place. So I tell people while they're in the kitchen, just keep marching every now and then. <laughs> if you start talking like this, just a little bit shorter breath, that is the right level. That's the level. That's the level. You and don't. How long need... for? This is a dictum to prevent heart disease, at least half an hour a day, to reverse heart disease. This can be reversed mm -hmm. one hour a day. Right. If I was to have um, my heart, like let's just say we just did exploratory open heart surgery on me, just for fun, right? Doesn't sound like fun, but and we went in and had a look at the. Arteries. Is that the, is that the can best? Can I tell you something? Sure. We can look at the inside of a blood vessel and actually see if there's plaque or not. If you want today, I'll show you the inside of your blood vessel. It'll take me five minutes to show Love you. Love to see it. Okay, I'm, come I'm, on, let's go. I'm ready to go. No radiation. No, no, I'm, I'm good, go. I'm good. Where do I go? Let's go to the next is one. Is it a needle? No needles, no, no pain. Needle. Okay. I don't mind needles, I don't mind. I'm, I'm not nervous. No, no, I'm a doctor, I'm scared of needles. <laughs> it's fine. What we're gonna do, we're gonna just measure the thickness of the intima wall. Ah, the thickness of the intima wall. Yes. And then Dr. Carr will just pass. Got it. Well, I did 40 years of smashing myself. Six or seven have been good, so let's see where we are. <laughs> yeah, just take a fresh picture of the external colloid. Thanks. 
A normal blood vessel is should the inner wall should be just a thin line. Right. You see this? Yeah. This is very bright. It's all plaque which got calcified. So my guess is from age twenty to 40. some age you had high cholesterol. Oh yeah. Yeah. It it shows. So we nowadays don't just treat numbers. We, if somebody's cholesterol is actually affecting them, mm -hmm. then I bring it down. I have patients who are in the 300s, I don't touch them, but I do this every year. If their blood vessels look pristine, no problem. I'm like, you Got don't it. have that issue. But you, just this is now between you and me as the same, you have an issue. So if your cholesterol goes up, you will put plaque down. Got it. And the same theory for you holds good is this much of plaque is enough to obliterate a blood vessel supplying the brain. Right, so, so you want to stay sharp. Right, so over time, say the last six years, because I've been on a good track, you it's probably, probably regressed. Have, have come yeah, down. I never saw you yeah. then, but my point is just remember this for your own good right. that check your lipid profiles every year. Right. Well, that was really, really interesting. I'm a lovely lady, Sheila. It was great to talk to her, but I think what you know, from a personal point of view, having your arteries looked at and to be told by one of the top cardiologists here in Los Angeles from Cedar Sinai Hospital that you actually have plaque and actually like see the image of the plaque there, even though it's only a little bit, the fact that now I know that I am predisposed, my body is predisposed to actually laying plaque down and that I've got to keep my cholesterol numbers down, total below 175, my LDL below 70. That's really good to know now because I've got to keep doing what I'm doing. And you know, to be perfectly honest, like if, if I hadn't have done what I did and I hadn't have changed, maybe those words that I said in uh, Arkansas on Thanksgiving Day. Uh, who knows, if I hadn't have got sick, I may not have ever slowed down and I might have already had a heart attack and died, so. Maybe that's true, I probably, could have, or at least I'd be well on my way to advanced heart disease. So um, it's good. So the message out of that is to keep doing what I'm doing, but avoid car accidents. The smart money tells me that 70% of all disease is caused by our lifestyle choices, including the big three. Do you smoke? Do you exercise? And what do you eat? So your food choices have a big impact on your overall health including your immune system. Think of your immune system as a series of guards around your body defending it against outside intruders and all kinds of diseases, including the one you're most predisposed to. Just like the cells in your muscle or brain, your disease fighters have got to eat. If that food doesn't give the immune system cells the nutrition they need, they may not perform correctly or as well as they should. This may result in lots of things, arthritis, heart disease, diabetes or other similar conditions. For me, it was chronic urticaria and geodema, a fancy way of saying chronic hives. <laughs> If cells aren't getting a broad base of nutrients, they can stop working and get confused. And in some cases, the cells can and do attack the very body they were supposed to defend. And that's what happened to me with my disease. But just because you have a tendency towards one disease or another doesn't mean you're at the mercy of your genetics. Like most things, it comes down to choices. Cleaning up your diet and lifestyle can have a huge impact on whether you're healthy or, like the old me, taking medication and suffering for years from something preventable. Hey, how are you? Matt, how are you, mate? Nice thank, to meet you. Thank you very much for having me. Um, it's great to be back in Austin, Texas. I haven't been here for, uh, it was at least probably a year or even 18 months ago. Really, really, really exciting to see just how far the movement of uh, trying to eat and drink more fruits and vegetables, just 
just in incredible how it's such a world theme right now. And it's a great honour to be able to shake the hands of all the incredible success stories and also the people that are just starting out. The message I like to share wherever I go is it's not just about following exactly what I did, it's about learning and, and becoming aware and awake of the fact of the power of, the, of fruits and vegetables and just what they can do. People say to me, Joe, do you think McDonald's is bad for you? Do you think Pizza Hut's bad for you? Do you think I don't think they are bad for you. I think that if you go to McDonald's and you go there once or, once or twice a month and you eat that food and the rest of the time you're eating mostly plant food and good lean animal protein, if that, I don't think it's bad for you. But if you only eat that food or you get most of your energy from there, the real damage is that you are not getting this food into your system. The real question is, how much of plant, how much of animal, and how much of processed should you be having? And you know what? I actually don't know the answer. But right now, what I'm doing is I'm living on 40% of my energy is coming from plants, about 30% from animal, and about 30% from processed. So up to you, but if you do what every other American does and you get 5% of your energy from here, and you get 95% of your energy from down here, you're gonna end up like every other American that is on medication up the Yazoo, cutting their life short by 20 years. Now, you have the choice to not be one of those people. It's up to you. The ball is in your court. This is the last two feet of freedom, right here. No one can tell you what to put in your mouth, no one controls you, no one straps you down. You know, there's not a lot of things you can do in the world. I can't get in my car and drive home at 100 mile an hour. I'll get booked. You want to go home and order 20 pizzas tonight? No one's going to put you in jail for that. So it's all about our personal choices. And telling people what to do doesn't work. You want to make a difference, you do it to yourself. Don't tell your husband or your wife what to do. Just do it yourself. Just lead by example. Pretty soon, the When Harry Met Sally thing is going to happen. I'm having what she's having. That's the When Harry Met Sally effect. That'll happen. Look how good she looks. She looks unbelievable. What's she having? I want to have some of that. Look, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. I'm someone who got myself into trouble through my own choices. And in the process of trying to get myself better, I learned more than I ever imagined I would. 65 days. You went five days longer than me. I did. Losing the weight is great. Being healthy is better. But understanding that I'm a small part in a larger community and that through working together, we can all make a big difference. Give me five. That's what keeps me going. I just want to thank you. Oh, because fantastic. You've been an absolute Very good. Good on you. That's great. Thank you. After experiencing firsthand the power of a reboot, Dr. Kerry Dioulis has brought the message of eating and juicing more fruits and vegetables to her patients. That's gotten better? Yes. Fantastic. Yes, I'm so excited. If I can give them that one extra piece, then I feel like I've served them better as a physician. And, and the juicing just, it, it, it changes your life. It really does. Keep doing the good work that you're doing. Those are great changes that you've made. So I'm happy for you. Little Ethan no longer has any arthritis or inflammation in his eyes or joints. And even better, he's off all medication and they tell me he's healthy enough now to play his first game of football. And watching Terry walk up to the Mayo Clinic to donate bone marrow for his brother is just another shining example of how little changes can and do make a big difference. And Phil has moved to North Carolina to be closer to a healthier community. How about a juice fest? And I heard you sell juices. We do! <laughs> it's so nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. I'm working on strengthening my foundation, I guess if you call it. Hi Joe, just want to say a big thank you. I've lost over a hundred pounds in weight. Not only that, I'm off all my medication, I'm off my steroids, I'm off my painkillers, I'm off the anti-inflammatories, and I'm feeling a hundred percent. I truly have so much energy that it's amazing and I feel wonderful and so healthy. I actually feel like I'm getting younger now, not older and winding down. I actually feel 10 years younger right now. 
I decided to juice for two months after watching Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And my migraines went away, my allergies. I lost 25 pounds and I found out, well, we found out we were expecting. So this is the best result I've gotten from juicing because the doctor said it wasn't possible. But it wasn't until mommy and daddy changed their diets that we were able to have a family. I looked like this. You know, the last time I went and had my A1C checked, my doctor said that he wasn't even sure I had diabetes anymore. He, he literally let, used the word cured. I was cured of my type 2 diabetes. My head is clear and I can think properly and I get excited to work and to have sex and to do all of these things that before I wasn't comfortable enough. I didn't have a desire to do. I wasn't comfortable in my own skin. Any advice that I can give to anybody that's planning on doing a reboot or juice fast uh, is as long as you try, at least you try, it's going to be hard, but if you don't give up, it's going to be worth it in the end. I feel more confident, more outgoing, more, you know, just myself. Can you stop recording now? <laughs> Woke up this morning. I suddenly realized we're all in this together. I started smiling because you were smiling and we're all in this together. I'm made of atoms, you're made of atoms and we're all in this together. And long division just doesn't matter because we're all in this together yeah i saw you walking in the city we're all in this together the city's changing we're changing and we're all in this together every 12 seconds someone remembers that we're all in this together in the kitchen of your rent control apartment we're all Well, oh.